Hello and welcome to Walk the Talk. I'm Shekhar Gupta and what am I doing at Delhi University's Department of Physics and Astrophysics? I've got no pretensions to knowing math or physics. I am only here because my guest this week is Dr. Archana Sharma, perhaps among the most illustrious students of this department ever. And this is an illustrious department in its own right. So, Archana, you accept that description? I think you are being too kind. This department has created many models whom we have followed and I'm humbled to be back here and back to the roots from where I started my journey. So thank you very much. Uh, but you know, uh, the reason I say it is, uh, you physicists go by evidence and go by calculations and uh, you don't theorize. So the fact is that at CERN, uh, the famous uh, laboratory that all of us have been hearing about and reading about, uh, in India as well, right. since your work on the Higgs boson particle, right. you are the only Indian scientist. And I'm saying not the only Indian woman scientist, you are the only Indian scientist. So that's illustrious enough. I think I might just add uh, some uh, more information there. I am the only Indian scientist who is employed yes. by yeah, but, but many others come Many and others come. are there. In fact, you get many of them to come. Right. You run yeah. a very aggressive internship program. Not only internship, but also since India has become recently an associate member of CERN, CERN yes. I have now started the journey of engaging Indian scientists. Indian scientists in a very big way, in a very different manner than what has been done up to now for the last 40 years. And uh, are Indians good at physics? Absolutely. I mean, for, as far as theoretical physics is concerned, I think we are the best brains in the world. The, you know, starting from Aryabhatta, you know, right, we, right, are, right. we have been theorizing and all our big uh, institutions. We yeah, have been, we've mostly been looking up, not looking down. Right, right. <laughs> so, so much, theory yes. part, I will agree to Look, that Looking part. up with curiosity. Exactly. Right. However, when it comes to experimentation, I mean, first of all, in the field where I am, um, experiments are very big, they are mega projects. Right. You need, I mean, no one country can do the, expect, the kind of experiments that we are working at CERN for. So the whole world has to collaborate. Exactly. And CERN was or has been a, a European laboratory, but now it has opened its doors to non-European member states as well, which is why India becoming an associate member has... CERN is, a, uh, is an abbreviation of a French G name. G uh, G you can... You can spell it out for me? Absolutely. It is uh, the Centre European pour la Recherche Nucléaire. However, in the last couple of years, this name has been opened up to be a centre, uh, the world centre for particle physics. Particle physics. G. And, uh, and your PhD is from here, but That's after right. that you've done most of your work in Europe. Uh, from 1989, I have been permanently at CERN yeah, right. and I have also acquired a DSc in particle physics Absolutely. from the University of Geneva. Right. Why? Because I, have, I was pretty good in my career as such, but I did not have too much experience with hands-on. Right. And that um, lacuna actually prompted me now to come back to the country to try to bring along with me some kind of a training which I can impart to so, young so students. So that's why you've set up this Life Lab Foundation. That's right, yeah. The Life Lab Foundation does exactly that because there was nobody to guide us when And it's we... your own effort, your own money. Totally. You're, you're giving it back to Indian totally, science. Totally, totally. So uh, yes. tell us before you give us a tutorial on particle physics, <laughs> no. uh, tell us how does your, what does your foundation do right. and what contribution is it making? So Life Lab Foundation is a foundation that I have set up with the help of two other like-minded people who help me to facilitate, to bring science awareness, science meaning physics, technology, engineering, awareness to young students in schools from the grades 9 to 12, even younger sometimes, it depends on the audience. But that's where uh, students typically make up their minds on what they want to do in the future. And I think in a country like India, science is somehow being neglected. R&D is particularly neglected. It's not really the focus of uh, young children to go for R&D. If given a choice, they would like to go to the engineering sector, they would like to become a doctor, they would like to do an MBA and then join some big multinational and uh, earn some good money. On the other hand, R&D as such is like a newborn baby, you know, you don't know what to do with it. So, but you'd never know what comes back. 
the World Wide Web is a big example, right. which has implications of trillions of dollars of economy in the last years. But nobody was years. researching to find exactly. the World Wide Web. Right. World Wide Web. Right. So essentially, it's the curiosity that drove the scientists right. at CERN to look for answers to questions like, where did we come from? Right. What is the universe made of? Right. How old is the universe? Yeah. What is beyond time? Right. What happened before the Big Bang? Is there antimatter? Right. And so on. But then answering these questions we built over the last many decades, the big ex uh, experiments and the big uh, Hadron Collider that you have heard about. And on the way, we have been spinning off technologies of importance to society. So first of all, uh, the work that you have done finally closes the debate on the Big Bang. Uh, we also featured Professor Narlikar on this show, who's the other, uh, other model. But do you think that debate is now settled with the work uh, you people have done at I think, uh, I think the debate, scientific debate will always continue because we are working at the frontiers of knowledge right. and we are just opening new doors, finding an answer and then I mean, definitely opens new questions. Not finding answers opens new doors as well. Right. So in both cases, it's a win-win when we are looking for heavy particles, for example, at the LHC. We are trying to look for, you must have heard about the God particle, the Higgs boson. Right, right. That was discovered in, at CERN in 2012. But then what next? So, so what is, I know you've been asked this question 100 times, so 101st time. No, I'm uh, more than welcome. What is the Higgs boson particle and why would we call it the God particle? Okay, there are two theories of why we would call it the God particle. One is that we've been looking for this particle for many, many years, many decades in fact, because it was uh, uh, given to us in theory as a mathematical formula, mathematical equation by Professor Peter Higgs in 1964. I so particle physicists have been after it. So mathematics told us that some, that some so and so like this exists. Exactly. Right. And that was the particle which gives mass to other particles. That was the main thing because we may have um, questions in our minds. Why is the electron so light? Why mm. is the proton so heavy? Mm. Why particles have different masses? Mm. So to explain that, the Higgs particle was invoked in terms of a mathematical theory and it explained mm. how the, there was interaction between particles and the boson mm. field mm. which would uh, then enable the particles to acquire mass. Mm. However, this particle was only found in 2012. So from 1964 to 2012 was this gap where experimental phys physicists were after this particle. So in one sense, it's a God particle because it gives mass to other particles. Right, right. In other sense, there was one of the directors of Fermilab, the sister concern in, uh, in the United States, who was so angry once and so frustrated because the energies at which this was supposed to be found was not in the capacity of the machines in Fermilab. So he said, God damn particle. And then the God, <laughs> the God particle stuck from there. <laughs> Yeah. So that is um, right. just a moment of frustration gave it its, uh, gave it its name. Its name. That's right. So, uh, tutorial continues. What is Hadron Collider? Okay, so suppose if I uh, ask you a question, if I give you some marbles of different colors or right. different compositions and I tell you, you would like to find out what is inside the marble. Huh. What will you do? Uh, I'll hold it up, okay. let light pass. Good. Or I'll break it. Good. Both answers are perfectly correct right. and the best answers possible. Uh, so you will put it under a microscope. Or today I'll Google. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Absolutely. Google Baba has all the answers. Right. So you put it under a microscope and you uh, put light through it. Right. right. So that's a, a probe. Light is a probe. probe. Or you break it or you smash it and you look inside it. Uh, right. So what are we doing in the Hadron Collider? Hadron is just another name of the family of particles that are the protons which interact in a strong manner with a strong force. So taking protons and smashing them together is the game that we are playing inside the Hadron Collider. I see. Uh, and why can't 10 countries have Hadron Colliders? So let's come to the costs now. Huh. So just to make a prototype of the Hadron Collider would cost about a billion dollars. 
just to make a prototype. So can we afford a prototype? We cannot. All countries, in fact, member states of CERN, they are the 22 member... Uh, they are your, contributing. They are contributing towards it and we made this machine which is its own prototype. Including India. India is participating from the 70s at right. CERN, in fact, and right. India has, in fact, in the accelerator, participated and contributed a big fraction of corrector magnets. Because uh, we have straight sections. What are corrector magnets so, and how does India contribute? Yeah, so we, uh, you know, for the accelerator, as you can imagine, that when you want to move a proton, you need to give it energy. Right. For that, you will need some magnets and some fields that have to be created. So electrical and magnetic fields are created where the proton can move. It can get a kick to move. And we have this collider, which you know is a circular collider. We cannot make magnets which are circular, so there are straight sections and then there are corrector magnets in between. Hmm. There are 1232 straight sections of 15 to 18 meters and then the small sections are much smaller. So why, why should India contribute these magnets? What is India's uh, capability in that area or does India make those? So India, of course, has also its own aggressive program of accelerator technology in right. RRCAT in Indore. And uh, well, uh, uh, what is this institution in Indore? Raja Ramanna Advanced Centre for Technology I see. in Indore, I see. where we have eminent scientists and very recently I had the good fortune of interacting with some of them. Hadron therapy you may have heard about as well. This ah. is a new form of radiation therapy for cancer treatment. I see. It uses accelerators. Right. In the world we have about 1700 accelerators. Right. In a hospital near you, you may have an accelerator. These are called linear accelerators? Linear right. accelerators, absolutely. So, in the traditional treatment for cancers, the x-rays that are given to a patient also damage the healthy tissue. Right. When you use a proton or a carbon ion in these accelerators, you are able to tune the energy in such a way that you do not damage the healthy tissue. You can fine tune it to the millimeter or half a millimeter level of where the tumor is. So you create a digital scalpel. And uh, this is a technology that India will definitely... Like the kind of things we now yeah. call cyber, cyber knife. I think that's a brand name. Exactly, yeah. Right. That's right, right yeah. If, in fact. So this is the direction which uh, I hope that uh, will be... Uh, so, so this is a collateral benefit of the so madness of scientists like you. This is one of the collateral uh, benefits, absolutely. Benefits.